Good morning, and welcome to St. Jude's Metropolitan Community Church as we gather in body and spirit to worship our God. Whether you have worshiped with us before or this is your first time joining, we want to welcome you and let you know that all of the information you need to follow along can be found in the comments section below this video. There is a link to the order of worship for this service and our email and phone number. Please contact us to talk to us directly or to leave a prayer request and please know that we will pray for you every day. You may also participate today by in the blessing and receiving of Holy Communion by having either or both some bread and juice available to hold up and be counted in our sacramental offering to God. You may then feed yourself and those with you by saying the body of Christ or the bread of life, whichever you prefer. Also in the information below and on the order of worship is a link to our online giving application. <clears throat> we ask that you, we ask for your continued support for even during this time of extended separation, all of our ministries continue to function. From our feeding programs to all of those in need that we can help, to our care and prayer ministries, to the production of these worship services, and all of the vitally important administrative and functional duties that keep our church and our community alive and vibrant. And so I want to thank all of our volunteers and staff who continue to show up and carry on our mission. And I would like to give you an update this day on, on when it may be that we can gather in larger numbers as one full congregation again. From the very beginning of our life together under COVID-19, we have promised to follow the data and the recommendations of health officials the best we can. And currently, that means that indoor gatherings in closed spaces such as, such as church are limited to small numbers. When this changes and more people can come to church to worship together, Know that we will always be guided by our love and respect for each and every one of you, taking precautions to protect you in all the ways we know how. Our sanctuary has already been taped off to separate some of the seating, and there are signs and instructions about the use of face coverings and hand sanitizers, among other things. As we get closer to operating at a more normal capacity, all of this information will be published and available so that we will all know what we can do to help protect others as well as ourselves. Finally, we will be moving to a live streaming format sometime, hopefully in the next few weeks. What this will do is provide us the opportunity to worship at the same time, either here or in our own homes. Live streaming of our worship services will be available on Facebook and YouTube, just as these recorded services are. And perhaps that will help us all get back into the habit of coming to church at the same time. And lastly, let us remember to always keep one another in prayer, to share our prayers with one another, and to trust that God is ever with us. And now let us prepare ourselves for worship by taking a moment to quiet ourselves, which will be followed by our call to worship. Now our call to worship. 
let us gather our spirits together in the name of Christ to worship our God. For surely God is in this place. God's love is here for you. Here and everywhere we open our hearts to God. Let us be fresh by God's Spirit that is surely in this place. Amen. Amen. And now if you would help me sing our opening song, Revive Us Again. blessing upon us, that you would continue, continue to show us the way, your way to be in this world, your way of love and compassion for all of your children. In Christ's name we pray, amen, amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis. When Jacob left Beersheba, he set out for Haran. Along the way, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones nearby, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying, and your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring, for I am with you. And I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you orphaned. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. 
This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. to show them who he was. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And so again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am now sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. This is our gospel of hope. Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
thank you for this day and for your constant and abiding presence. We pray that we may be like fertile ground in which your word can take root and blossom into something good in this world. Help us to be ever mindful that no matter what happens in our lives, that you are continually with us, guiding us, preparing the way for us. Open our ears now to hear your words through mine, for surely you are with us in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. There is a movie that I like that is titled City of Angels, and it stars Meg Ryan and Nicolas Cage. And it takes place in Los Angeles and is, is centered around Meg Ryan, who plays a, a very determined and focused doctor, seeing the world and, and life only in only what can be seen and touched and medically altered. And Nicolas Cage, who plays an angel, and who is assigned to the hospital where Meg Ryan works, performing all sorts of angelic duties with the sick and the dying, as well as the doctors and nurses who are working to help the sick and the dying. And the main storyline of the movie is about the angel falling in love with the doctor and how each one has to come to know the other. Meg Ryan having to come to believe in a non-physical spiritual world and Nicolas Cage having to come to understand what human thought and experience were like. And the whole movie is a, a wonderful love story between these two beings. So if you ever want to catch a good, old-fashioned, heartwarming love story with lots of opportunities to cry, I highly recommend it. But also within this love story is another story, one about the angels themselves. They're all over the place in this movie. They're in, in the hospital, they're on the streets, they're in people's homes. And in one extraordinary scene, they're even at the beach, where they go every morning to listen to the sunrise, because they hear music in it, heaven's music. And so it's all about angels being all around us, tending to us with God's loving care. And even though they are not supposed to show themselves to us, sometimes we can see them and know that that feeling or intuition about something being with us at, at times, that that is actually true. And you get that sense while watching this movie. I think because some of the music in the movie is Sarah McLaughlin's In the Arms of an Angel, which is a hauntingly beautiful song in itself. Actually, it's a song that has become a staple at funerals and celebrations of life because it is so comforting and moving. And so this movie becomes more than just a movie. For it shows what I already believe, that there are angels all around us. I believe that there are angels right here, right now. Angels that we may not see, but can know and believe that they are here. For I also believe that the heavenly realm and the earthly realm are not separated by some fixed wall between us, but that rather we are fully connected with lots of movement going on all the time 
between what we often think as something only being up there and then something else being down here. I believe that angels are present with us all the time. We may not always know and feel their presence, but we can trust and believe that they are here. One of the interesting things I've always found in this story of Jacob and Jacob's ladder that we read this morning is that part about angels ascending and descending a ladder. And the part I find interesting is that it says they are ascending first, which means they must already be down here. And if they're going to go up first, they must already be down. And maybe there's nothing to that. Maybe it doesn't matter which one is listed first, going up or going down, ascending or descending. But I actually think it does. For if the angels are already down here with us, that's a lot more comforting than thinking we have to wait for some special circumstance for angels to descend to our realm before God decides to send them down here to spend a little time with us. God has already done that. And the angels are here among us, watching over us in times of sickness and need and, and in times of the simple dailiness of our lives. And even standing on the beach, listening to the sunrise. And I find all of this to be especially comforting right now. For it seems that we have now been talking about viruses and pandemics and social upheaval for months now. And of course we have. There is great upheaval and sickness in the world. And even though I try very hard to keep an optimistic outlook on things, it's hard not to become disappointed and disillusioned with things. Especially for us when we, when we think of church. For while we do still gather in very small numbers, we will continue to follow all of those scientific and medical recommendations about when we can increase those numbers. Which means for now, the vast majority of us cannot come to this one place. And that we need to gather some here in person and some in spirit, but somehow still be one. Waiting patiently and, and responsibly for the safest time for all of us to be here again. And even though this disappointment is, is still running high, we can still hang on to all of that hope. Hope that things will actually change. Not by political pressure or people arguing with one another, but by compassion. For that is where our hope should lie. Indeed, that's what hope is actually good for. That the world will actually become a, a more compassionate place. Not filled with hurtful things that are hurled this way and then hurled back the other way, but, but rather with compassionate hearts for all people. And while we wait for this and hope for it to actually come about, we can trust and believe that no matter where we are physically, God knows 
exactly how to find us. Because God has placed angels in our lives, special messengers to God who bring our prayers and our concerns and our joys, our very selves, up to God, going ahead of us to bring all of these things about us to God so that God knows exactly where we are in our lives and then to bring more of this hope and compassion back down to us. So that maybe things can actually be a little bit more like heaven here on earth. And when we can believe in that, when we can feel something that like that in our very bones, then we, like Jacob in our story this morning, can know that all places are sacred. Everywhere is holy. And that God resides not only here, but everywhere. So that no matter where we are, we can all say with, with conviction that surely God is in this place. And there are angels all around. We do sing those words every week. And I bet it is not only us that are moved by them every week, but the angels themselves. So much so that we might even get a glimpse of them. You know, sometimes when we look out here or wherever we might be looking, and see what we think is only empty space. We can actually know through scientific discovery that, that what we think is empty space is actually filled with all sorts of things. You know, atomic particles, subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, all sorts of stuff going on and what we don't see. Things that we could actually not see at all just a few years ago. But we can also know through our hearts, our souls, our minds, that this space between us is also filled with angels. Sometimes visible, sometimes invisible carriers of God's love. Constant around us. Protectors of God's blessings of When Jacob woke from what he believed to be only a dream, he knew that God was with him. And so he went and built an altar right there on that spot. May we continue to gather around all the altars that we have now built, knowing that we can find comfort here in the arms of angels. Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? God, we want to thank you for being with us today, for gathering us together in your name, for sending your angels to be our protectors, to be our guides, to be the messengers of your great love for us. Wrap us in your holy arms. Comfort us as we move through a world that, that has not only become scary, but is drifting farther and farther away from you. Help us ascend our own fears, our own mistrusts, our only propensity to label others as our, as our foes and, and ones who must be defeated rather than our sisters and our brothers, all with one holy parent. God, lead us through and be our God of 
renewed life, of reconciliation and recreation. Bring us into your realm today, here on earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow the angels of God to speak to us. It is now the traditional time in our service to receive gifts and offerings to support our church and our ministries, and I ask that we all continue to do this. Hosanna in the highest. 
Well, blessed is the one who came down to earth so that we all may know the wonder of God's love. And so with thanks and praise, let us proclaim once more what is the mysterious and miraculous truth of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ is here, and Christ shall come again. And now let us all pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, we give you thanks this day for sustaining us, renewing us, and restoring us. Bless us and guide us as we gather from near and far to offer our gifts to you in hope and trust that you will be fully present in this shared sacrament. In memory of Christ's death and resurrection, therefore, we offer to you, O God, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. And we ask that you turn these simple elements of your creation into our spiritual nourishment once more, blessing all of the offerings that are being presented to you right now. Through them, bring us together as one body in one name of Christ. Lord, remembering your sacrifice to save and heal an entire world, we believe that you are present now with us in these holy elements and desire to receive you into our souls. Gather us together in your name, unite us wholly into you, never permitting us to be separated from you. Through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. sharing in, in this holy meal together. 
Even space and time can no longer separate us from sharing in this and being blessed by God into one body of Christ. And so now let us share in this meal together.
holy and almighty God, almighty God, thank you for giving us a new song to sing this day to bless us and refresh us with your love. Amen. Amen. Amen.